Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And here we are yet again with uh, a COVID broadcast about inbound tourism into the United Kingdom and the sorry state that we are currently in. Um, I am delighted that this morning we had um, a protest in bright sunshine, showing Britain, the capital, off at its very best. Um, and the colleagues I have on front, in front of me, which is Josh Croft from UK Inbound, we have Rob from AC Group and Emmanuel from E Voyages. Um, they were both on board the boat. Unfortunately, I wasn't. I'm confined to barracks for a few days, but I'm on board a boat outside Westminster protesting about how UK inbound tourism has been adversely affected. Now, we're going to just quick ch chat about that and see what the consequences of all of this are. Um, Joss, you're the man at the head of UK Inbound, the representation company for all of these businesses, the membership company that's really interfacing with government. Where are we are right now? Because we've been talking about this for well over a year now. Each time we talk about this, it can't, it can't go on, can it? No, absolutely not. I mean, we did some research over the past few days, and it's showing that about 90%, in fact, 87% of our inbound tour operators have lost 95% of their business this year. That's not sustainable in any way, in any business, to have that lack of revenue. You know, we were on the Thames this morning. That, that river should be full of uh, international visitors, about 20 odd million of them each year coming to, coming to London itself. The cash tills should be ringing. You know, people should be going to the theatre. These are all jobs that are at real risk because the government has failed to support the industry properly. I suppose the public's opinion would be, well, we don't want people here if they're going to bring some nasty variant of the, of the uh, COVID virus here. Um, and surely you're full anyway. I mean, the Thames are going to be full with domestic tourism because you can't get a hotel room for love and the money. And if you can, it's very expensive. I think there's some parts of the country that are doing very well this year. But even on the best predictions, Visit Britain is predicting it only to be about 40% of 2019 figures. And I think that's very over-optimistic. International visitors spend three times per visit what a domestic visitor does. So they're spending it in different ways, in the theatres, in the hotels, in the restaurants, the Brits just aren't doing. And you've only got to look around the major cities, whether that's London or Edinburgh or Manchester or Cardiff. And these are empty cities. The cities are on their knees at the moment without the commuters and without that spend coming from international visitors. So it's an absolutely critical point that we're at where, as I say, you know, a lot of operators haven't received the support that they need to. Their businesses, yes, their colleagues, yes, their livelihoods are all at risk at the moment. So it's an absolutely shocking situation that we've got. We've got to see some action from government in terms of getting that reciprocity so that it's not just Brits that can return into the UK, but actually it's international visitors that can come here as well. So we've got to get that as a first start. And we're desperate for a date because no one's going to come to this country if we haven't got a date, if they don't know that they're not going to have to isolate when they come here on holiday. There's a very short window of opportunity here. A business into the UK is very seasonal. If we can't get business going through August, then that's the end of the season for us. And that would effectively be five winters in a row that people have had to suffer through since effectively October 2019. So it's a desperate, desperate time at the moment, Graham. To some practitioners, we've got Rob Russell. Rob, good afternoon, Rob. Uh, Rob is the CEO of an extremely well known DMC called the AC Group. Rob, what are the practical difficulties that you're facing at the moment? Well, the obviously the, the main difficulty is the, the lack of a decision, lack of a date. We're seeing that our competitors in Europe, uh, particularly markets such as Italy, France, Ireland, their tourist boards and their governments have worked together, they've set dates and they've been able opening. They've also had positions in place with things like furlough where they've been able to take furlough support but actually work with furlough. So their staff are allowed to come into the office, they're allowed to actually help the business recover to get ready for when they can open versus the setup that we've had where furlough has been amazing, don't, don't get me wrong, I think we've all appreciated it, but the situation is people are being paid to sit at home and they're unable to help us, they're unable to come in and actually help and what people seem to miss is that if you're a, a restaurant, a pub, a hairdressers, any other type of service or industry, you get told today that you can open tomorrow, you will get people walking up, in off the street and give you business. As a travel company, our lead-in times can be anything between four weeks, 18 months and we need people to be prepared to do that work. So you can't literally just open tomorrow and be able to open. We need um, a staggered opening period. 
we need a set date, we need to plan to work towards, and we need ongoing support. Our, our, the situation of, of COVID and furlough has been amazing, but the recovery is going to be really, really difficult because we work with credit, we work with credit, therefore we've got to be in a position where we can actually have the cash flow coming through to be able to bring the staff back. So um, as part of the application, as part of the plan for a tourism recovery fund, we need to have ongoing support ready to support us moving forward, but with a commitment for when we can open and we can all work towards it. Alongside Rob, we have Emmanuel from eVoyages. Uh, you look after people that are coming to the UK on luxury bespoke holidays experiences right through the UK. Emmanuel, are you experiencing the same sort of pangs of, of fear really about the future? Yes, absolutely, uh, Graham. So um, basically, what I would add um, to, to this is um, what well, we've, we've already referred to the leading time and the seasonality of our um, sector. So we've in effect, I mean, if I take my company, we are your rent is end of September. We've got pretty much already August wiped out because again, our customers being B2B, they need to commit with the airlines, with Eurostar, you know, and right now not knowing if the borders are going to be open or not, they've already taken the decision to cancel those tours and they're not going to be replaced. So even if the government announces tomorrow that in the next few weeks, the borders are going to be reopened, what's canceled is not coming back. And with the leading time, that we're working towards. We're all now working pretty much towards 2022, but without having any income for the last 16 months. So I think coming back to the furlough scheme, yes, we are grateful for that scheme, but it's not adapted to our sector because we've got work. We have been busier than ever. We've got to process the cancellations. We've got to process the postponements, the refund for request, the new inquiries. I mean, on some bookings, we're on postponement number four. Every time we have to work with our clients to work out a new date, they need to get the seats with the airlines. We need to change the dates with the suppliers, check the availability and so forth. There's an awful lot of work that goes on behind the scenes which means we can't just simply mothball our business um, because we have to have the staff carrying out the work. Then on top of that, we've got over fixed overheads. Staff is not the only cost we have as a business. So we've got to pay the accountant, HR support, IT support, license um, for the software that we use. And I'm sure I'm forgetting um, loads. All of that without any income for the last 16 months. And then the government says, oh, yeah, you can take out a loan. OK, well, it's going to take years and years to pay that back, you know, the debt. So if I was to have my business valued now because of the level of debts that I've had to contract as a result of that, it probably would be worth peanuts when it was a viable business pre-COVID that was bringing in 20,000 visitors. And as a matter of fact, when we now go to those lenders and say, can we have a top up? They say, well, you're in the travel sector. Sorry, no, because we're being deemed too risky, but through no fault of ours. Um, so, and again, as, as uh, Rob uh, was saying, you know, other countries are supporting um, their tourism sector. It takes years and years to build those relationships. So our customers, if we're not around tomorrow, they won't put UK on, on their um, brochures, you know, it will just be simply market, market shares just gone out of the window. And we can contribute to the government's leveling up agenda. Not only can we fill those empty city centers with international visitors, but we can also drive revenue into the more rural parts of the countries that do need that. Um, and we can educate our clients and, and, and take them to places which without our support, they wouldn't. Um, so, but we're just being invisible, I believe, as far as the government's concerned. And we through the sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt, Emmanuel. But isn't isn't one of the issues, Rob, or Emmanuel, Rob, that really we have in place a government that doesn't really get it, doesn't Absolutely. understand travel Absolutely. and tourism. I mean, the, inbound the, the or scenario, out there. The, the leading mark, leading time from markets varies, particularly from the market. So you've got someone like the Europeans, the German market, for instance. They booking eighteen months in advance, so they're currently reading media that says that we've got 50,000 cases a day, all of the information is coming out about COVID. They're not planning to travel here next week. They're planning to travel here next year. And actually, they're not going to travel here next year because of the media that's coming out at the moment. The message that comes out is we're not open, we don't want them, we're not welcoming. And on all of those factors, we are going to set ourselves back 20 or 30 years in the tourism sector. 
I actually spoke to Visit Britain this, the last two weeks and I've said exactly that to them. Without more support coming from Visit Britain and from UK government, we are setting ourselves back 30 or 40 years as a country. The amount of independent suppliers that we work with for, from driver guides, independent blue badge guides, restaurants, bars, um, wine tasting, craft breweries, all of the things that actually the UK public love going to see and love going to do benefit from business from us from inbound tourists. So when they've all got to close because there isn't inbound business coming in, there isn't tourists coming through their doors, that's going to impact everyone's lifestyle here. The, the pubs in the high street, they're going to close. The, the restaurants, the cafes, the independent shops, the hoteliers. I mean, you, you mentioned at the start, can't get a hotel room for love nor money. I can guarantee you, Graham, I can get you about 50,000 rooms across London anytime you want them in tonight, tomorrow, whenever. I met a GM last week in London. I, I went in for a meeting with him middle of the day and he arrived to meet me in his chef's whites because he'd been cooking breakfast because his hotel is so short of staff and so short of visitors that he's having to cover every area of the hotel. This is a four star hotel in Kensington. These are flagship properties in an area of the country which is synonymous with luxury. And yet we cannot deliver it because we're getting no support. It's not just us, it is the knock on effect to um, Tower of London, um, you, you name it. I mean, Merlin, the London Eye was opposite us today. Most of those pods are going around empty. This is, this is a problem that has to be sorted and it has to be sorted through government support. Yes. Um, is it time for a change of tack, if you like, from the travel and tourism industry? You and I have discussed this off camera many times, but is it time that we change tack? One of the problems that I perceive, if you like, is that we don't really have public opinion and public support with us the, for a number of reasons. Perhaps it's now time to look at how we can get public support but the things that Rob's just said that our very, the things we hold dear will start to disappear from our lives if we don't do something. And that there is no doubt that this government is for turning. You know, there's, there was a description of the Prime Minister some weeks ago saying that he sees which way the crowd runs, sprints to the front and says, follow me. We need to actually get to the front of that crowd and draw that crowd with us, don't we? And so far, our whispers in the corridors of Westminster, our attempts at trying to change government opinion, have really fallen on, fell on stony, stony ears. I mean, the, the, the day of travel action was useful in it, got organisations like you speaking to other travel organisations. But apart from that, it probably didn't even raise an eyebrow uh, with Grant Shapter, if it did, it was probably two raised eyebrows at the same time. Is it time for us to change tack? I think we've, you know, we've seen, if you, if you go back several years, inbound tourism was always seen as the kind of the golden jewel, if you like, of the visitor economy. It's bringing in international money, it's bringing in foreign exchange and exports, it's the fifth largest. You know, it projects Britain across the world. And now that we don't tend not to invade countries, but we project our power through soft power, inbound tourism has always been seen as a key element of that. Um, it helps, uh, uh, particularly the guys that we've got on the call today. These are the guys who are sending business across Britain into the rural destinations, the destinations that consumers aren't aware of at the moment. So it's been somewhat surprising that that has been given away at the expense of, you know, domestic tourism and outbound tourism. And as I say, you know, in a post-Brexit world where we need to be competitive, we need to have our place in the world, and we need to be driving exports, it's very surprising that the government hasn't really woken up to the fact that hospitality is different from tourism, that it is a, 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 a complicated supply chain that we've got there, and that these are the guys that are really delivering the business for Britain. I mean, again, you know, we had 30 people on the boat this morning. We had five of the Queen's Award for exports there. They're selling Britain. They're investing millions and millions of pounds, probably dwarfing any investment from the public sector through our national tourist boards in terms of the amount of money that they sell spending, uh, 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 spending to sell and convert into business for Britain. So I think the government is, is vulnerable on some of those points. And of course, you know, not to forget that we have a, a very significant year as far as the government is concerned next year in 2022 with the Platinum Jubilee and the Festival of the UK and the Commonwealth Games. These all need selling now. So I think, you know, government is going to have to realise not just because of the economic impact, not just because of the 
kind of the, 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 the soft power ambitions, global Britain ambitions, that these uh, events next year are not sustainable in terms of a financial benefit for the country or a reputational benefit for the country, unless there's an industry to convert that interest into travel to the UK. This today is not the first thing that we've done, Graham, since this terrible pandemic started in February 2020. We've incessantly pushed government. We haven't get, got where we want to. We've also been pushing other governments within the United Kingdom. So we work very, very closely with the Scottish government. And of course, they did come up with grants for their businesses, for their DMC businesses. Um, so we have had some success. And that's what we want to see. So I don't think it's an easy win this. And of course, the government has been focused very much around kind of, you know, delivering the vaccination programme and the health programme that sat behind this pandemic. But really, we've got to start to look. The rest of the economy opened up yesterday. We are one of the few parts of the UK economy, uh, you know, potentially the most significant export part of the UK economy that is not running at the moment. So we've just got to force that message home. And, you know, as I say, make the case through data, you know, the surveys that we've had, the fact that, you know, a quarter of all the respondents to our survey this week said that they're going to see no business for the remainder of 2021. These are shocking statistics. So they've got to cause, they've got to cause concern for government. Just, it's a, it's a very, very, very difficult situation. There's no doubt of that. And I wish you and Rob and Emmanuel all the very, very best of luck. Needless to say, uh, whatever we can do as a, as a publication in this area, we will do. The thing that worries me, as I said at the beginning, is that the things that we hold dear in society are beginning to ever weigh, and once they've gone, they've gone, and that the, the deterioration of inbound tourism is a huge factor in those things. And I think if we have to change tack and we have to change our message, that's one of the messages that we could put out. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I've got people buzzing me. I think it's a track and trace because I've got COVID, as you know. So I apologise for that. That's, this is COVID in action. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.